Once again, a very good day, my dear students. You know, we have completed so far two chapters. We have completed the photosynthesis. We have completed absorption by root and the process involved. And in photosynthesis, we saw what is photosynthesis, the significance of photosynthesis, the process of photosynthesis, and the various experiments involved in photosynthesis and the carbon cycle. Okay. Whereas in absorption by root, we learned what is the function of root, why do we need water and minerals for plants. Then we went to the efficiency, what are the different factors, different characteristics of root that makes a root efficient in absorbing water and mineral. Then we discussed about the process that is your imbibition, diffusion, osmosis, endoosmosis, exoosmosis, turgidity, flaccidity, deep plasmolysis, plasmolysis, osmotic pressure, turgor pressure and wall pressure. Then we also dealt about the significance of osmosis, plasmolysis, diffusion, imbibition, etc. Then we also had discussed yesterday about the gutation and bleeding and ascent of sap and descent of sap. Today at the end of the class little bit I will deal about so that I do not forget ascent of sap and descent of sap. Not now, afterwards. Okay. Now we come to the next chapter that is transpiration. Now with this, this is the last chapter of we have, we have already dealt with photosynthesis which actually comes after this chapter. So now we have the last chapter of the plant physiology. Okay. Now what is transpiration? Transpiration is loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial part of the leaf. I repeat loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial part of the plant not leaf I am sorry from the aerial part of the plant is called transpiration. I repeat loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial part of the plant is called transpiration. Whereas yesterday I dealt with the gutation that is loss of water in the form of water droplets due to root pressure through hydrothoughts is called your gutation. Okay? So that is the difference between gutation and transpiration. The examination the last you differentiate transpiration and gutation. Now today it is a, a very very simple chapter. We do not have so much of theory and content. We learn what is this the syllabus tells. The syllabus tells what is transpiration, the process involved in transpiration, then what is the significance of transpiration, then you have an, a specific apparatus called Ganon spotometer which is used to measure the rate of transpiration at the different atmospheric you know conditions and the limitations involved in that then you have the factors affecting photosynthesis sorry factors affecting transpiration not photosynthesis factors affecting transpiration and gutation and bleeding which I have already discussed yesterday I have discussed this point gutation that is loss of water in the form of water droplets from the aerial part of the plant is called gutation here it is a droplet whereas in transpiration it is water vapor and bleeding I said the loss of water or the cell sac from the cut or injured part of the plant is called your bleeding or exudation otherwise also it is called exudation. Now we go to various experiments involved in transpiration before that let me tell you what is the significance of transpiration it has two main significance number one it brings about suction force or transpiration pull. I told you in the when I talked about the absorption of water by root, you know the root is able to absorb because there is a force called suction force is created or a transpiration pull is created. So because of that just like a pulley, you know you are pulling the water from the uh, well. So you have the pulley which pulls the water just like that. The Transpiration brings about a kind of a pull from the well which is a soil that is called the transpiration pull or the suction force through which the, it enables the every enhancement of absorption of water. So the transpiration the first significance is it creates suction force or transpiration pull I repeat 
it creates suction force or transpiration pull normally we use a straw when we suck water automatically from the glass it goes into our mouth similarly here the aerial part of the plant you know the water is getting lost and here is the, the stem the xylem of the stem acts like a tube okay and the water is in the soil so from the soil a kind of a force is created in the xylem called the transpiration pull or suction force which enables the absorption of water that is they are able to do this just because the water gets continuously lost in the form of water vapor which is called the transpiration second significance on a hot sunny day when you sit under the tree you feel cool now the coolness is felt just because there is during the day even if it's very hot there is constant transpiration taking place and the water vapor coming to the atmosphere which brings about it condenses okay and brings about a cooling effect so it has two significance main significance that is here it brings about the transpiration pull or suction force and the second one is it gives cooling effect to the atmosphere now we have different experiments 1 2 3 4 5 okay now this is of course how the transpiration takes place i will tell now before we go to the experiment there are three type of transpiration one is the stomatal transpiration the other one is cuticular transpiration i told you if you remember one of the factors adaptation of leaf is the presence of cuticle enables the efficiency of photosynthesis because it is waxy in nature and the light penetrates through the leaf because it is waxy and able to absorb water or um, the light could pass through the cuticle into the mesophyll tissue so the first one is your stomatal transpiration second cuticular transpiration okay cuticular transpiration stomatal transpiration and the third one is the third one is lenticular transpiration you know the stem has got a number of pores or numerous pores called lenticle so that three type of transpiration takes place in plant number 1 stomatal number 2 cuticular number 3 lenticular which means the transpiration that takes place through stomata the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the stomata through the stomata is called stomatal transpiration similarly the loss of water in the form of water vapor through cuticle is called cuticular transpiration and lenticels are a group of cells present in the stem of the plant so the loss of water in the form of water vapor through the lenticels are called lenticular transpiration so the exams they'll ask you name the three type of transpiration the three type of types of transpiration are cuticular transpiration stomatal transpiration and lenticular transpiration okay now among the three transpiration maximum transpiration in plant occurs through the stomata because it's directly comes in contact with atmosphere as well as the sunlight then we go to the various experiments to prove that transpiration is taken by only the aerial part of the plant okay we are going to prove the transpiration takes place only through the aerial part of the plant not by root not by the other parts okay where there are no stomata or lenticels or cuticle now here we have the experiment number 1 we take a well watered potted plant which means remember whenever you go to carry out an experiment on transpiration you have to always have a pot a flower pot or any plant any pot having a plant but it has to be well watered acche se paani deke it is that plant which, which, which you will take so we take a well watered pot okay plant potted plant well watered potted plant a pot which has got a plant but is well watered okay so you are taking a well watered potted plant and what you do is you are covering it nicely the plant okay nicely you are covering the plant with a polythene cover the entire plant is covered with the polythene cover tightly okay so that no atmospheric moisture comes in. why they'll ask in the exams 
why do you cover the plant with the polythene? Okay, and if to prevent the entry of atmospheric moisture, the answer will be we cover the plant with the polythene in order to prevent the entry of atmospheric moisture. After doing this, remember first you take a, a potted plant, pour it nicely water, well set, then you cover it with nicely polythene and keep that set up in the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours. Okay, so when you keep in the outside the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours, the transpiration takes place. Through whom? It may be through stomata, it may be through cuticle, it may be through stem, the lentil cells of the stem. Now you will see after two to, at the end of 2 to 3 hours, you will see water droplets on the inner side of the polythin. You will see the water droplets on the inner side of the polythene which proves that the transpiration has taken place and it has taken place only by the aerial part of the plant because no atmospheric moisture has come in, no water from the soil has gone in. It is because it is nicely well tight and waxed fully so there is no chance neither from the soil to enter water to enter nor from atmosphere the moisture to enter. So the water that has come out is only from the aerial part of the plant. Now you have an another experiment, okay. Now this experiment normally in the examination they give you both for absorption of water by root as well as for transpiration. So you have to read the questions, you have to see on which context the question is being asked, the diagram is being given. So this is a common diagram. Now in case of absorption of water by root, they will give you only one diagram. Whereas in case of, uh, well this is a control experiment. Normally they will give you one control experiment. But this is, yeah, they will give you both. They will give you both for both absorption of water by root as well as the um, um, transpiration. Now you are taking a test tube filled with water. On the top you are pouring an oil. Okay, you are pouring oil on the top. So you have on the surface oil, then you have the test tube is filled with water, then you are inserting a plant. Okay. Now you are taking this setup and keeping it in the sunlight for an hour or two. Now when you keep in the sunlight for an hour or two, the initial level of the water was here. Now after 2-3 hours, the level of the water has gone down to this level. Its reason is due to transpiration the water is lost and it was absorbed by root. So the water, root constantly absorbs the water, it is conducted through the xylem to aerial part of the plant and the aerial part of the plant loses water through transpiration. Now why they will ask you give reason that you have you are pouring water in the in the water. Now the reason is the oil prevents the surface evaporation. Okay. So when you pour oil here, there is no surface ev evaporation of the water taking place. So the water is well kept, kept well intact inside the test tube because there is no chance for surface evaporation since there is oil floating on the top. Okay. So this proves that I repeat this experiment to make it very very clear. You take a two one test tube, you take it just a test tube and you are pouring the test tube filled with water and then you are having pouring oil on the top so it prevents the surface evaporation then you are inserting a plant taking this setup and keeping it in the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours. When you keep in the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours the level of the water decreases. Now why does the level of water decrease? It decreases because the water is lost in the form of water vapor through transpiration. Similarly the root goes on absorbing water, the root goes on absorbing water, conducts it to the through the stem to the aerial part and it is lost and after some time you will see the level of water has decreased from A to B, okay. So this was the level of water, now it has come down to this. They will ask you why do you pour oil in the test tube, okay. Now we pour oil in the test tube along with the water just to prevent surface evaporation. So this is experiment number 2 okay, which proves that the transpiration takes place only from the aerial part of the plant in the form of water vapor. Then you have another experiment to prove that plant undergoes the aerial part of the plant undergoes transpiration. 
that is you know children this cobalt chloride paper the color of the cobalt chloride paper is b blue okay and it turns pink on absorption of moisture so i repeat the color of the cobalt chloride paper is blue but on absorption of moisture it turns pink now you have here the bell jar a bell jar b and bell jar c you will see in a there is a well watered potted plant and where the in, uh, it's very well tied you know very well tied the nt pot is tied with the polythen so that no surface no moisture goes from the soil into the bell jar inverted bell jar so you are taking a well watered potted plant you are covering the base the entire pot with polythen not the plant the polythen and the pot thereafter you are taking a bell jar and inverting it and keeping the setup okay one setup a then you are having another setup b similarly you are taking a well watered potted plant okay and you are covering nicely with the polythen thereafter you are covering it okay you are covering it inverted with an inverted bell jar but here the difference is in a you are not fixing the cobalt chloride paper but in b you are fixing the cobalt chloride paper so this is your cobalt chloride paper whereas in c you are fixing the cobalt chloride paper but there is no plant okay i repeat children in a you have a well watered potted plant the pot is tied with the polythen and the plant is covered with in by an inverted bell jar okay bell jar ko ulta hum log rakhe hain then you have a setup b in which you are taking a well watered potted plant you are covering the base with polythen tightly with wire wax so that no moisture from the soil comes out then you are invert you are covering it with an inverted bell jar and along with that the difference between a and b is in b you have the cobalt chloride paper similarly you have the setup c in setup c you don't have plant but you have the cobalt chloride paper i told you the color of the cobalt chloride paper is blue on absorption of moisture it turns pink okay now you keep all three setup a setup b setup c in the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours when you keep in the sunlight for 2 to 3 hours what happens is the cobalt chloride paper in this case in setup a the water the plant undergoes transpiration okay the aerial part of the plant because it's an inverted bell jar it's made up of glass or light okay it's exposed to sunlight and the temperature so automatically it undergoes transpiration and you have the water vapor and the water vapor in turn condenses and you will have on the inner wall of the bell jar droplets of water so this droplets of water the source of this uh, droplets of water is transpiration neither it came from the atmospheric moisture because there is no chance in it's in covered with inverted bell jar neither it came from soil because the soil the pot is nicely well tied with the polythen so this is a setup similar to this where the transpiration has taken place now another setup b in setup b you have the cobalt chloride paper i told you the function of cobalt chloride paper is to absorb moisture on absorption of moisture the cobalt chloride paper turns from blue to pink remember bp blood pressure remember bp b stands for blue p stands for pink so it turns pink so what happens here is because end whatever so this this in this setup whatever water was released at the time of transpiration was absorbed by cobalt chloride paper and it has turned pink okay i didn't get a pink chalk chalk so i have drawn this this one but it turns pink now in setup c in setup c you have no plant so there is no source of any water it remains blue the cobalt chloride paper in setup remains blue because there is no plant no transpiration no water vapor no condensation of water vapor into water droplets and that there is no chance for the cobalt chloride paper to absorb and turn pink so the setup b proves that the transpiration has taken place from the aerial part of the plant setup a proves that the transpiration has taken place from the aerial part of the plant and setup c is a kind of a control experiment because there is no plant 
no transpiration, no water availability for the cobalt chloride paper and that it remains blue, it is not able to turn pink. Okay. So, this is the next third experiment on transpiration. Then you have one more experiment which is similar to cobalt chloride paper because in the exam sometimes they will give you this diagram or this diagram or this diagram or this diagram. Okay. So, here this is also cobalt chloride paper. Now, here what happened is we have fixed inside the bell jar, but here they have clipped the cobalt. Now, they have taken two slides, kept the cobalt chloride paper and then clipped nicely and then fixed onto the leaf. So, when it is fixed onto the leaf, the cobalt chloride paper, you have you know A, here it was blue in color, original. Originally, it was blue in color. So, this particular leaf was kept in the sunlight. After 2 to 3 hours, it turns pink. After 2 to 3 hours, the cobalt chloride paper turns pink because the transpiration has taken place on absorption of moisture, it has turned from blue to pink. Okay. So, these are the four experiments. Now, before I go to this opening and closing of stomata and structure of stomata, let me tell you little about stomatal transpiration and stomata. If you remember in photosynthesis, I had dealt about the structure of leaf. The leaf has got the upper epidermis on which you have the cuticle, then you have the mesophyll, the palisade tissues. The palisade tissues have got mesophyll cells and spongy parenchyma. So, the spongy parenchyma and mesophyll cells are collectively called palisade. The palisade tissue and the spongy parenchyma are collectively called mesophyll tissue. I correct myself. The spongy parenchyma and palisade tissues are collectively called mesophyll tissue. Then you have the cambium. Listen to the word cambium, children. The xylem and phloem are collectively called the cambium cells. So, you have the endodermis, inside the endodermis you have the cambium that is your phloem and xylem. Okay. Then you have the lower epidermis, then you have the cortex, okay. this is actually the cortex, then you have the lower epidermis. Now, this is upper and the lower. In plant, the lower epidermis has got more number of stomata than the upper ep epidermis. Look here, I have drawn only one stomata in the upper epidermis, whereas I have drawn 1, 2, 3, 4. So, in the lower epidermis, you have 4 stomata, whereas in the upper epidermis, you have only one stomata. So, that shows that the upper epidermis has got less stomata, whereas uh, lower epidermis has got more number of stomata. This is very important because this will help you to understand when they give you clip the leaf and they will ask you questions, which part of the leaf undergoes more transpiration, whether the upper part or lower part, dorsal or ventral. Now, that time you have to answer the ventral part undergoes more transpiration there. When I discuss about the various experimental questions, I will tell you in the next class. Okay. As of now, this much you understand, you, this is very, very important. When I get back to the experiment discussing various experiments from the test paper, you will be able to answer because the upper epidermis has got low, less number of stomata and the lower epidermis has got greater number of stomata. Okay. Now, we go to the next one that is the opening and closing of stomata. Okay, if you remember, I told about the structure of stomata. The stomata is guarded by two guard cells. Okay, remember children, stomata is nothing but a pore which is guarded by a pair of guard cells. A pair of guard cells. Now, this guard cells have got a number of chloroplast. Okay, inside the guard cells, you have got a very good number of chloroplast. So, this chloroplast, because due to the presence of chloroplast, now listen, I am going to tell about the opening and closing of stomata. During the day, the stomata remains open, whereas at night, the stomata closes. At night, the stomata closes, during the day, the stomata remains open. How? I told you, the stomata is formed of to a pair of guard cells. The guard cells have got <coughs> chloroplast. So, due to the presence of chloroplast, the guard cells undergo photosynthesis. So, automatically the result of photosynthesis is synthesis of starch. Starch is nothing but salt, okay, solute. So, you have during the day there is continuous synthesis of starch or glucose which is a solute. 
then you also have got water. So due to the presence of more, remember children, due to the presence of more sucrose, the starch, the glucose, automatically the water content is less. So because during the day there is more starch present, less water present. Because the water goes on, goes into the, this one, dark cells, but it undergoes, suddenly it undergoes photosynthesis and then the water is utilized and part of the water gets lost. And there is, where, but where is, there is constant synthesis of photo uh, starch here. Now here you have automatically, I told you yesterday in the absorption of water, tonicity, hypertonic, hypotonic, isotonic. Now here the guard cell becomes hypertonic, hyper meaning more starch, more solute, less solvent, whereas the neighborhood cells of the epidermis, they have got more water and less salt. So due to the presence of more water, more water and less salt or less solute in the neighborhood cells, whereas in guard cells, because constant synthesis of starch, water getting utilized, so less water, more starch or more solute, so the guard cell is hyper and the neighborhood cell is hypo, so automatically there is a constant inflow of water, endoosmosis taking, taking place, so because of the endoosmosis, constant endoosmosis taking place, okay, and the cell always remains in a swollen state. The guard cell during the day remains in a swollen state because there is a constant endoosmosis taking place because of the hypertonic in nature. Okay, you remember we told the, the so automatically here you have the exoosmosis. We told you the plasmolysis is the shrink, uh, shrinkage of protoplasm when kept in a hypertonic solution. Similarly, flaccidity is the shrunken state of protoplasm due to exoosmosis. So there is constant exoosmosis in the epidermal cell, but whereas here the guard cells, there is a constant endoosmosis taking place because of hypertonic in nature. So because of the constant endoosmosis during the day, it remains in a swollen state. So because it is now remember the guard cells, the inner part of the guard cell is stiff. Whereas the outer part of the guard cell is, that is this, this is the outer part of the guard cell is flexible, okay, whereas the inner part of the guard cell is rigid or tough in nature. So because of that, it swells up and constantly it maintains the kidney shape or bean shape because of which the pore is being created during the day. Whereas at night what happens, okay, so this is due to, now this is called starch theory. This is called sucrose theory or starch theory. Okay, at night what happens? At night no photosynthesis. Whatever starch is synthesized during the day, it's being translocated, which means transported to other parts of the plant. So there is a continuous outflow of starch to different part of the plant. So automatically at night the guard cell becomes hypotonic because all the salt moves out the sucrose and starch moves out, the starch especially, sorry, the starch moves out of the guard cell and automatically there is more water and less star solute. So at night the guard cell undergoes exoosmosis because the salt, the, the solute, the starch is moving out to the neighborhood cells to distribute the food prepared by the guard cells due to the presence of chloroplast during the day. So automatically when the water moves out, okay, when the, especially the starch moves out, not the water, when the starch moves out, okay, it becomes hypotonic, water remains more and hypotonic and then along with that you also have got exoosmosis because when the starch goes to the next cell, this becomes hyper, this becomes hypo, automatically the water moves out, the exoosmosis takes place, the cell becomes flaccid. Okay, so during the day the guard cell remains turgid because of which the pore is open. At night the guard cell becomes flaccid, chapter you know, the flat, flaccid, so the stomata closes at night. Why it is turgid? Because it is in the sizing starch due to the presence of chloroplast. So because of that it remains hypertonic and due to hypertonic in nature there is constant endoosmosis and that it is remains always turgid. At night what happens? It is distributing the starch synthesized during the day, automatically it becomes hypotonic and because of the hypotonic in nature, the neighborhood cell becoming hypertonic, 
it the starch moves out and then it becomes flaccid the water moves out due to exosmosis the cell becomes flaccid thus the stomata closes this is called starch theory for opening and closing of stomata you have one more theory called potassium ion concentration theory now if you remember in the light reaction the chloroplast you know the in the light reaction the chloroplast synthesizes atp so due to the rich presence of atp there is a constant inpouring of potassium ion into the cells guard cells so because of that high concentration of potassium ion it remains turgid which means the presence of starch and the presence of potassium ion makes it hypertonic in turn the endosmosis takes place and that the the guard cells remains turgid whereas at night what happens is the potassium atp is utilized to synthesize starch there is no atp available at night so automatically the potassium outpouring of the potassium ion takes place or pouring of the starch takes place that it becomes hypotonic due to hypotonic the neighborhood cell becoming hypotonic the water also moves out and that the stomata becomes flaccid closing of the stomata takes place okay so we have learned about the opening and closing of stomata then we have this little bit little let me tell you about the ascending sap and descending sap though i have mentioned in the last two classes okay now what is ascending sap ascending sap is mainly the water is absorbed by the root okay the water and mineral is absorbed by the root that water and mineral which is absorbed by the root is being transported to different parts of the plant through xylem in class 9 you have learned the function of xylem is ascend up sap or it's also called ascent matlab upward so the upward movement of water and mineral through xylem is called ascend up sap similarly the downward descent matlab downward the downward movement of food prepared by the leaf okay or green part of the plant to different parts of the plant through phloem is called descent of sap i repeat children the upward movement of water and mineral through xylem is called ascent of sap and the downward movement of food prepared by the leaf through phloem is called descent of sap then gutation and bleeding i had told you the loss of water gutation is loss of water in the form of water droplet through hydrothoughts due to root pressure is called gutation remember early morning your banana plant is full of droplets of water that is because loss of water in the form of water droplets through a group of cells called hydrothoughts because transpiration takes place through stomata or cuticle or render cells but the gutation takes place through a group of cell just below the stomata of the monocot leaf especially the banana etc okay uh, through hydrothought is called your gutation due to root pressure is called gutation and bleeding is your loss of cell sap from the cut or injured part of the plant is called your bleeding so we have learned most of the syllabus we have completed for this transpiration we have done and the significance we have done and the process is this is adjust it the loss of water in the form of water vapor okay and um, that's your through stomata the process is it may be through stomata it may be through cuticle it may be through lenticels then you have you have we learned about the what is you know gutation what is bleeding and the opening and closing of stomata and upper epidermis has got lower stomata lower epidermis epidermis has got more stomata then we learned about ascent of sap and descent of sap opening and closing of stomata now to recap the whole thing i told you what is transpiration transpiration is a loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial part of the plant it is called transpiration then i said there are three type of transpiration cuticular transpiration lenticular transpiration stomatal transpiration maximum transpiration takes place through stomata then i said the upper epidermis has got less stomata lower epidermis has got more stomata then we had 1 2 3 4 experiments today to prove that the transpiration takes place only from the aerial part of the plant now we had the first experiment where you had nicely covered it with a polythene a well watered potter plant we had kept it in the sunlight and we saw the water droplets on the inner surface of the polythene cover 
which proves that the transpiration has taken place. Here you have the similar setup where you have the droplets of water on the inner wall of the bell jar. Here you have the cobalt fluoride paper whose original color is blue but on absorption of moisture it turns pink and that you have here of the setup after 2 to 3 hours keeping it in the sunlight this setup it has turned pink because all the moisture all the water vapor that was released due to transpiration is being absorbed by the cobalt chloride paper. Then here it is a kind of a control experiment okay, where you have no plant at all okay, and you have only the cobalt chloride paper so no transpiration has taken place and that the cobalt chloride paper remains blue. And similar is the experiment this here instead of putting it here you have straight away clipped over a green plant a twig having a leaf and kept in the sunlight the transpiration has taken place and that it turns pink. Then we learned about the opening and closing of stomata. Now before that let me tell you this experiment they ask you in both absorption of water by root as well as transpiration in absorption of water by root they will ask you the same experiment you are taking a test tube filled with water inserting it and then you are pouring oil in it and you are inserting a twig a plant and the absorption also takes place transpiration also takes place and that the level of water decreases from A to B and then we are pouring oil in order to prevent surface evaporation. Then we learned about the opening and closing of stomata, in the opening and closing of stomata, the stomata is guarded by a pair of guard cells which has got a chloroplast which undergoes photosynthesis which under synthesizes starch and starch is a solute. So due to the presence of more solute during the day and less solvent it remains hypertonic due to hypertonic nature endosmosis takes place due to endosmosis the guard cell remains turgid and then the inner wall of the kidney cell the kidney shaped guard cell is rigid the outer side one is flexible and that it swells and becomes turgid and that you have the during the day the stomata remains open. At night the starch, starch is transported to other cells automatically it becomes hypotonic and because it becomes hypotonic it gives out water in exosmosis because of the exosmosis the cells turns flaccid and that the stomata closes at night. Then you also have got potassium ion concentration theory and due to the synthesis of ATP during Leibniz reaction there is a constant inpouring of potassium ion into the guard cells which makes the guard cell hypertonic due to the presence of potassium ion and that it becomes hypertonic and water moves inside endosmosis takes place it becomes swollen and becomes turgid due to the turgid nature of the guard cell it the stomata remains open whereas at night no light reaction no an ATP and no pouring of instead the potassium ion which was poured inside moves out and that it becomes hypertonic and then the water moves out that turns flaccid and the stomata closes. So with these we come to the end for today and tomorrow what we will deal with this in the next class what we will deal with is what is on especially Ganon's potometer, limitations, factors affecting then I will deal some more experiments ok the questions from the test paper I will explain to you various diagrams that can come in the examination to prove that the transpiration takes place or to prove how the upper epidermis has got less transpiration and lower epidermis has got a more transpiration and the initial weight of the plant is more suppose you know children if you take at the beginning two to uh, beginning of the experiment if you weigh this if it is 5 kilo after 2 to 3 hours it will reduce to either 4 kilo or 4.5 kilo it is because the plant has lost weight due to loss of water that is due to loss of loss of water due to transpiration. So like that we have a number of experiments basing on I mean uh, uh, questions from the test paper we will deal that too. Now we go to the external factors that affect the rate of transpiration I repeat we go to the external factors affecting the rate of transpiration. Number one external factor is your intensity of light ok, second temperature, third velocity of wind, four humidity, five carbon dioxide, six atmospheric pressure. I repeat intensity of light, temperature, velocity of wind, humidity, carbon dioxide, atmospheric pressure. If you remember 
for photosynthesis we had three of them intensity of light we talked about carbon dioxide we talked about if you remember i interconnected both as the light intensity keeps increasing the rate of photosynthesis increases but when the uh, carbon dioxide availability reaches to 0.0 degree uh, 0 to percent you have the first saturation point but in spite of that after even after that if there is availability of carbon dioxide and there is increase in the intensity of light the photosynthesis does increase but it comes to a constant stabilization when the carbon dioxide availability reaches 0.05 percent after that no photosynthesis takes place so that's how we connected intensity of light and carbon dioxide in photosynthesis but here let's see how now with the increase in the intensity of light the rate of transpiration increases because in a cloudy weather the transpiration does not take place whereas with good intensity of light the rate of transpiration increases but if the intensity of light is too severe the stomata closes automatically no transpiration takes place next temperature it is proportionate to you know the inverse inversely proportion to the transpiration meaning you know increase the temperature increases the rate of transpiration and atmospheric temperature does affect the rate of transpiration because when the atmosphere is dry automatically I mean that and the temperature is more in the atmosphere the atmosphere becomes a dry and hot automatically there is more loss of water and suction forces more loss of water the rate of transpiration increases then you have the velocity of wind you know more the greater the velocity of wind greater is the rate of transpiration is because suppose you know that you have a tamarind tree in front of our office the transpiration is taking place during the day and under the tree it is very cool but when there is heavy wind okay when the velocity of wind when there is a fast wind or velocity of wind is more the speed of the wind is more automatically whatever the water vapor present in and around the tree is being carried far away so because of that it increase then automatically the around the tree becomes again dry then the rate of transpiration increases and you have the cooling effect continuously happening so that's how the velocity of wind affects the rate of transpiration humidity does affect the rate of transpiration on a humid weather the rate of transpiration is always low because if the when there is water in the atmosphere the suction force is comparatively less the pull is comparatively less because the atmosphere doesn't accept more of water so the rate of transpiration is low when there is more humid high when there is less humid i repeat humidity matlab water vapor being present in the atmosphere jab pani okay moisture is present in the atmosphere that is called humidity jab atmosphere mein pani moisture hai automatically there is no thirst okay there is no thirst the atmosphere does not have a thirst so it doesn't attract the water there is no suction force so the rate of transpiration is less but the atmosphere has no humidity no water vapor the rate of transpiration increases then carbon dioxide increase in the carbon dioxide increases the rate of transpiration because the stomata is opened always similarly here the increase in the atmospheric pressure decreases the rate of transpiration remember here the increase in the atmospheric pressure decreases the atmospheric uh, decreases the rate of transpiration so now these are the external factors because i said this first because this experiment is to prove the rate of transpiration at different external factors like intensity of light temperature velocity of wind humidity in these four factors we will be taking and experiment doing this experiment to prove at the rate of transpiration is different at different atmospheric factors then you have the internal factors that is water content of the leaves if there is more water content in the leaf automatically more water will be lost if there is less water content in the leaves less water will be lost because when there is more content of the, the water the stomata is open then transpiration takes place and if there is no water there is no transpiration no absorption is less automatically there is no transpiration then you have the adaptation of plant to reduce excessive transpiration now what are the adapt now we had if you remember we had learned the adaptation of leaf 
for photosynthesis if you remember we had told that needle like leaf okay automatically because the large surface area we had said then we had also said you know when it is reduced to spines and etc the rate of photosynthesis becomes less so we had learned different adaptation of leaf which either increases the rate of photosynthesis or decreases the rate of photosynthesis similarly here also we have the plant have got different adaptation to adjust their you know to reduce their excessive transpiration because if it uh, there is excessive transpiration then the plant will wilt or droop i'll tell you what is wilting now next is now the first one is sunken stomatum you know especially in the nerium the plant nerium the stomata is always sunken matlab you have here the stomata is on the epidermis but in case of nerium the stomata will be present somewhere here so automatically it doesn't directly come to the exposure of the atmosphere or sunlight so the, here it is here but in case of nerium the stomata will be somewhere inside below the epidermis and you have a group of cells so in such case since it is not coming directly in contact with the atmosphere the rate of transpiration will be less okay that is it so sunken stomata next second is narrow leaves if you go to i told you the hill stations you have the pine tree all their leaves are narrow because in the hill station in the rocky area the availability of water is less so automatically when there is availability of water is less if the leaf is broad the rate of transpiration will be more okay so because then automatically the plant will die and dry because there is no continuous water available for the different metabolic activities of the plant so because of that in always you will see in hill station you have lot of pine trees which has got narrow leaves it's because there is lack of water availability next we have reduced exposed surface okay meaning more or less same it has no large surface area it has a reduced exposed narrow surface automatically less transpiration will take place then you also have got loss of leaves so automatically you know when there is so much of um, uh, temperature heat etc no water available automatically the plant will lose leaf so that there is no transpiration takes place mainly you have an example is your cactus the cactus you will see mostly in the desert area there the water availability is less so if there is plenty of leaf there will be lot of transpiration no water will be available will be absorbed the plant will die so what they do is they have a thick nice green stem constantly water being stored in the thick stem the stem undergoes photosynthesis and it has reduced leaves which mean that mostly cactus either it has a reduced chutasa leaf or it is reduced to spines or thorns you will not see plenty of leaf in cactus it's mainly because in order to reduce the transpiration then you have the thick cuticle now you know in desert plant in some plants you will see very very thick cuticle in order to prevent you know the water coming out of the leaves i mean in order to prevent the evaporation or loss of water you have a thick cuticle so these are the five okay adaptation of plant in order to reduce transpiration then we go to the this one these two experiments will we will deal with the first one is ganon's photometer now what is photometer now photometer is an apparatus okay this is one of the photometers sometimes they will have a bottle like a thing different type of photometers are there the purpose of photometer is to measure the uptake of water the intake and uptake of water by the plant so the instrument or the apparatus which measures the uptake of water is called your photometer there are different type of photometer you have farmers photometer ganon's photometer which measures the uptake of water then you have your gario's photometer which measures the difference in the rate of transpiration on the dorsal part of the leaf and ventral part of the leaf and you have darwin's photometer which measures the suction force or the transpiration pull if you remember i taught you in absorption of water by root that there is a pull called transpiration pull which pulls the water like a pulley so which measures okay darwin's so you have different type but the commonly used one is your ganon's photometer
Now look at the board here. The total setup. Okay. The total setup is covered with water. You have a beaker filled with the color water. You have, you know, a vertical tube. Then again horizontal which is going up connected to another test tube. Okay. Now which is also fully filled with water. Then you have a measuring scale. You have a graduated scale or measuring scale attached to this horizontal tube. Okay. You have a here descending tube, you know, ascending tube, then the horizontal tube, then you have ascending tube, then you have a broad mouthed test tube like structure. Then you have a reservoir fixed to a cock, stop cock, which means if you open the water flow is there, if you close the water flow is not there. So you have this is the entire setup. I repeat, you have a beaker in which you are taking colored water, then you have your ascending tube, then horizontal tube, um, then you have, you know, then again it ascends, then it enlarges to form a test tube like structure, then you have a reservoir, okay, having a stop cock. And on the horizontal tube you have the graduated scale or measuring, measurement, I mean scale which, which with measurement. Now the total, you are taking a twig, you are cutting the twig in an oblique manner not just like this you are oblique so when you cut the twig in an oblique manner and insert here okay and keep the setup for keep the setup for two to three hours okay now you will see now you don't keep you, you have to be present you just can't keep there now this is to measure the rate of transpiration especially the uptake of water at a different you know factors external factors so first you are taking and keeping it in the sunlight okay with the increase in the sunlight then what you do is after maybe you are keeping it in the setup after half an hour 10 15 minutes you are just okay as you keep you are just lifting the this one lifting this tube and then you are introducing the air, bu air bubbles and the air bubbles will keep going with the increase in the intensity of light the movement of air bubble will be faster. So suppose let's take in 15 minutes, okay, in 15 minutes it may be 5 plus in the rate of this one may be let's take 0 0.5 centimeter. So if they increase the light intensity it will may become in 30 minutes it may become 2 centimeter. Again in let's take in 1 hour it may become 4 centimeter okay depends if the intensity of light is more but if the intensity of light okay that's about the intensity of light but if the intensity of light is less there will be it will have a steady same it will have the same movement slowly dire, dire, the air bubbles will move now you are taking now that's it now you are taking the whole set so increase in the intensity of light then rate of that shows with increase the intensity of light the rate of uptake of water is more the transpiration is more then you are taking the whole setup and keeping under the fan a fast working fan so there what happened when the fan is working you have the wind available so when you keep under the fan and a fast working fan and keep it for some time you will see with increase in the velocity of wind the rate of photosynthesis increases then after that you are taking the whole setup and keeping it in the dark room. So when you keep it in the dark room there is no intensity of water available. So automatically there is no transpiration taking place because first of all in the dark room, in the darkness no stomata remains closed. Then you are taking it in a, in a, in a cloudy weather, in a cloudy weather. So when you keep the setup, end day setup in a cloudy weather, the rate of photosynthesis is less. Then after that you are taking the whole thing in a cold temperature where there is 6 to 7 degrees Celsius or 10 degrees Celsius, there also there is no photosynthesis taking place, especially in the early morning. Early morning during the day even if the temperature is less, if there is intensity of uh, light available, the rate of photosynthesis will be stable. So thus this Ganon photometer is used to measure the rate of transpiration at different external factor. Then 
you have one more experiment called your, this is just an experiment you are taking a twig, a twig or a thread tying four different type of leaf ok. You are taking wax remember children on the dorsal part of the leaf number of stomata is less on the ventral surface of a leaf suppose this is leaf ok the dorsal surface number of stomata is less and ventral surface number of stomata is more. So, what you do is setup A you are covering the dorsal part of the leaf with wax which means the upper surface you are covering with the wax. In A you are covering the upper surface with wax. In B you are covering the lower surface with wax. In C you are covering both the side with wax. In D you are not covering with the wax because this question often comes in the exam. exam. Remember you have in leaf A you are covering only upper surface, in B you are covering only lower surface, in C you are covering both the surface and in D you are not covering. 2. Here I told you upper surface has less stomata and lower surface has more stomata. Dorsal side has less stomata, ventral side has more stomata. Okay. Now tell me question number 1 they will ask you write the what is the aim of the experiment. The aim of the experiment here is you will not write a transpiration if you write transpiration it is wrong. The aim of the experiment is to prove that the rate of transpiration is more on the lower surface than on the upper surface. Question number 2 give reason for the above they will not give you the answer they will only tell you give reason for the above. Now if you are writing the correct answer that on the lower surface more transpiration and upper surface less transpiration you will write the rate of transpiration on the upper, uh, lower surface is more than the upper surface that is because the number of stomata on the lower surface is greater than on the upper surface. Question number 3 they will ask you compare B and C comparing the leaf B and C. In which leaf has more transpiration? The leaf C will have more transpiration sorry the leaf C will have no change no transpiration and whereas B will have more transpiration the leaf will droop. Now they will ask you another question they will ask exactly what question they will ask is comparing B and C which leaf will dry faster? Leaf B will dry faster because it is covered on the lower surface rate of transpiration is more um, uh, uh, covered on the lower surface and upper surface though one or two stomata but transpiration is taking place it will dry. Here there is no change because upper and both lower are covered no transpiration the leaf will remain fresh and nice because water is not lost. Now comparing A and B they will ask you which leaf will dry faster. Now Remember children here A will dry faster than B because the lower epidermis is exposed for transpiration whereas here upper epidermis is exposed for transpiration. So you have wax on the upper epidermis, wax on upper side, wax on lower side. So here upper side is covered with the wax, here lower side is covered with the wax which means upper here upper side is covered with the wax but lower side is exposed and lower side has more stomata so rate of photo, uh, transpiration is more here the lower surface is covered upper is exposed so the number of stomata available in between two is for transpiration is here it is more here it is less. I repeat let me go slow little you have leaf A leaf because this often comes and you will have to be very with the presence of mind you have to answer leaf A leaf B leaf C leaf D ok. A you are covering the upper surface with the wax, B you are covering the lower surface with the wax, C you are covering both, D you are covering, you are not covering. Another question, so many questions can be framed. Another question they can ask you is in A, B, C, D which leaf will dry fast? The leaf D will dry fast because the stomata of upper side and lower side is exposed to sunlight and atmospheric temperature ok. Then they will ask you which leaf will have what happens to leaf C. The leaf C will show no change because the stomata on upper and both lower are covered. So no transpiration the leaf will remain fresh. Then they will ask you questions between A and B 
which leaf will have more rate of transpiration leaf a will have more rate of transpiration because more number of stomata are present on the lobus side so automatically rate of transpiration is more in b a than b now so these are the different possible questions that can be asked from that and that question often comes to check your reasoning capacity understanding capacity and the knowledge another question they will often ask you is that weighing you know they will give you know they will attach a weighing machine over this then they'll ask you the weight at the end of the two hours second hour of the experiment is less why because the water is lost initial weight was more and the final weight is less because the water is lost due to transpiration with this i come to the end of the chapter i talked about what is transpiration various experiments to prove that transpiration takes place from the aerial part of the plant then we discussed about the external factors affecting uh, transpiration internal factors affecting transpiration adaptation of plant and uh, for to reduce the excessive transpiration then we learned about basing on the external factor used in apparatus called ganon's photometer and we measured the rate of transpiration after different external factor they will ask you you know the ganon's photometer has got two three limitations number one it's very very difficult to introduce air bubble number three since you are not using a plant you are using a twig so there is a possibility of drying faster okay now these are the difficulties the limitations that ganon's photometer have but however this is one of one of the best apparatus which is used to measure the rate of transpiration in different external factors thank you have a nice day